right, uh, let's see what we can do today. <clears throat> Undo some things here just to make it a little bit easier for us. Things tend to get in the way. All right, what we're using is the uh, OPSD schedule head on that mojo rod that we like using, the five weight Reddington. It's all beat up now, uh, but it's still a pretty good one. We got that echo ion rod, or a reel, four or five weight. And um, maybe we'll get something. We're gonna try it without an indicator, all of near deer initially, and then uh, we'll adjust from there. Uh, sometimes they'll hit fairly quickly. Sometimes they won't. And use basically using a line indicator this time. We see some in the current. We may put on an indicator, keep it in the, the money zone longer. All right, uh, let's go ahead and try the indicator. This indicator that we use is the uh, one made out of cork and with a little rubber O-ring. Unfortunately, we're running low on them. We lost a couple already over the course of when we picked them up over there in uh, Green and New Braunfels. But that said, uh, we still have one left. We'll start out with about a three foot drop on it and we'll see what happens. Alrighty then. Now the fly of choice uh, previously was the uh, Olive Woolly Bugger. We tend to use the uh, Near Deer because we like the uh, extra weight that we get with that little jig head. Do like a downstream drift and see if we can get one to hit here. There's one chasing it. Chased it. Another one chasing it. So we see them in the pockets. It's really clear right now. So you can just see them drift right into it and try uh, getting the fly. All right, let's go get that one in the pocket here. And what we like about this OPST Skagit head is uh, we really don't have to do any back casting or false casting. It's really just uh, basically some switch cast, roll cast, or whatever cast. Very forgiving line. Ah, missed that one. Shoot. See some over there in that hole. Let's see if we can get it over there. Turned away again. You can see them. They look at it and they turn away. I think they want a little midge. What do you think? Let's go with a midge. All right, we're gonna go with these uh, rainbow warrior midges as a trailing fly. A little tiny thing here. Of course, we only have two now. So that's going to work out really nice if this one works out. Probably end up losing them, but who cares? We're out here fishing. Okay, so uh, there it is. All of Near Deer, Rainbow Witch Warrior. Trailing. There's one looking at it. need to adjust the indicator, make it a little bit lower. Dropped it about another foot. All right. Grab the old net. 
so we can get this guy in. All right. Look at him. All right. There it is. Rainbow Warrior. All right, so uh, they're here. They're right in that one run right in the middle of the uh, river. They're kind of staging here behind that rock and then anything passing through. And we added another uh, foot of line to the indicator and put that rainbow midge and we were able to get them. Gotcha. All right, barely hit it. Dose, baby, dose. Let's see what he went for. Oh, he went for the trailing uh, midge. All right, this is number two, number two, hoo hoo. All right. They seem to be going for that rainbow warrior trailing. So that'll work. All right, that's number two. So they're right, they're right in this seam, right in here. And if you can get the right drift, you'll get them to hit. That's a cool looking Tacoma. Little water crossing over there. That's a much newer Tacoma than ours. Hmm. All right. Dead drift. Just let it do its thing and look for any movement. They're hitting it very lightly. That's what we're noticing. Come on, get into the seam. So we lost that one rainbow midge and we only got one left. So we're going to go ahead and put a trailing uh, Prince Nymph. And we made it a little bit longer this time because uh, that we were using tungsten bead on that um, uh, on that rainbow warrior. And this one's just a normal brass. So we made it a little bit longer and see what happens. I mean, we can get it down where we need it to be. All right, we uh, tried different things. Now we're going to go with an olive near deer and a Y2K. Plus uh, we added more line to it. Uh, we can see them deep in the water column, so figured let's go add some line to it. Maybe we'll get them to hit. All right, well, he went for a mop fly sunk deep, so all right. So, so Murphy's Law is going to say uh, the one mop fly I have will be the one that I'll lose. <laughs> all right. Cool beans. They're deep. We gotta get them down, and we got about five foot of uh, line, uh, and then we're using this mop fly to drop it down in there. All right, well, that's number three. Now that we found the pattern, five foot of line on the indicator, under the indicator, and just drift the mop fly. They were hitting that Y2K, just the, the hook was broken. Go figure. <laughs> Drifted down deep and you can actually see fly in the water oh and you can actually see them take it what we learned in this round we wanted tandem rig fly so anytime we go to the this particular uh, river and we'll just not talking of this this one section uh, low water crossing but this will work across the board uh, as we work the river is locate the fish we see them that they're they're holding deep in the water column so um, next round we'll just go right for a uh, heavily weighted um, lead fly, uh, be it the bugger pattern in olive, uh, or switch over to a chartreuse or orange um, mop fly. Uh, again, 
heavily weighted to get it down in the water column. And then we'll put that trailing midge, Rainbow Warrior midge in this case, uh, size 16 on a caddis hook. Um, you know, we learned that uh, other midge patterns didn't work this round, so uh, we'll try that. And if um, that doesn't work next time, we'll, but we still see them uh, looking at the lead fly and turning away, then we'll uh, definitely adjust on that Rainbow Warrior midge. But uh, for our blue fish, um, our blue river fly fishing trip uh, on, that, uh, on that round, this is what we um, discovered worked for us. Uh, looking at uh, other things, again, we talk about that strike indicator. That's what got us into the being able to, to take the fly uh, or the tandem rig into the zone, be the transition zone that we we're working, or upriver or downriver, and being able to keep it in that zone where the uh, fish were lurking. And then uh, also adjusting for them. In this case, it was five foot plus. We, we, we could see the trout reacting to the uh, flies, but uh, as they're moving above us, above the water column, uh, they would look, turn away, and not uh, really work much harder to do a chase after it. But you drop it down to where they're lurking, boom, we were getting our hits. Alrighty, that said, uh, thanks for stopping by, and do come back. And until next time, we'll catch you all later, and good luck and good fishing. All right, we got a hit. Hit it on the bottom. Oh, that's a nice one. That is a nice one. These are nice.